Good evening, everybody. Uh, for those who don't know, because I can't see anybody, um, I am uh, Jeremy Fry, senior pastor here at Advent. This is kind of, we're kicking off our Reformation uh, celebration this weekend. Uh, of course, next weekend as well, we'll celebrate with worship and on Sunday, ice cream and open house for the Community Engagement Center, dedicate that building. I'm really excited about all that. But uh, Dave, uh, Pastor Dave, formerly artist, formerly known as Pastor Dave, uh, as we like to be calling him lately, uh, when he retired, uh, he did what most uh, retirees do and just kind of went around and visited other churches and and uh, worshiped and uh, had uh, a lot of experiences with that and experienced a lot of different places. Uh, and and this is kind of uh, his journey, not just from that, but just kind of his whole journey through his life as a Christian and what it means to be a Christian today. Uh, so uh, I have absolutely, I've heard a couple songs, but I have absolutely no idea what he's going to do. I completely trust him 100%. <laughs> And uh, we'll see if that's a good thing or not. But uh, everybody, the artist formerly known as Pastor Dave. Good to be here. Let's start off with a little worship. We sing, we listen in awe We remember the light we've seen Your presence surrounds us The fulfillment of promise What was, what is, what will be Our eyes are opened Our minds are unclouded we are lifted above the smog Returning to love that was there all along We're reminded as we sing the song You are love, you are light The first cause of all things The most wonderful mystery You are life for all life You are joy for all time you're the reason we're meant to be for all eternity. Surrounds, overwhelms, and distracts. Help us live, help us love, help us be alive with your presence, a light in the darkness, your love for the world to see. You are love, you are light, the first cause of all things, the most wonderful mystery. You are life for all life, you are joy for all time, you're the reason we're meant to be, for all eternity. You are love, you are light, the first cause of all things, the most wonderful mystery. You are life for all The reason we're meant to be for all eternity. Did you recognize some of those people? Um, I love to begin with worship because. Uh, I run into a lot of people, frankly, who don't worship anymore, 
and who feel like uh, they could kind of get to know God on their own. And I'm not saying that's not possible. I think it definitely is. But um, there's something very, very different that happens when we gather together, when we remember together whose we are, first of all, and then who we are. You remind me, I remind you, and there's something really important about that. Uh, this next song I want to sing is another worship song, but it's for you to join me, and you might think, well, how can I join you in a song I've never heard? Because you probably haven't heard this one since I wrote it. Um, <laughs> It's that easy. It's designed to be that easy. I'll start singing it, and you'll get it very soon. And I invite you to join in. And this is one of these songs that sounds really, really simple on the surface, but as you begin thinking about it, uh, it kind of takes you deeper and deeper. And there's one section that I'll just be singing by myself. And at that point, I'll say, listen. And then, <laughs> so let's sing this together. drawn to the river. I am drawn to the river. I am drawn to the river by the grace of God. I am drawn to the river. I am drawn to the river. I am drawn to the river, to the river by the grace of God. I am cleansed in the river. I am cleansed in the river. I am cleansed in the river by the grace of God. I am cleansed in the river. I am cleansed in the river. I am cleansed in the river by the of God. Listen. I don't know where the river will take me, but I trust in the one who's with me through the storm. And I don't know if the water Yes, I am known. I am made whole in the river. Made whole in the river. I'm made whole in the river by the grace of God. I am made whole in the river. Made whole in the river. I'm made whole. Got it. So why am I doing all of this? Um, it's because I've noticed something uh, throughout my ministry that has been troubling me, and it's really accelerated since the pandemic, and that is uh, the fastest growing group in our country is the nuns. Do you know what I mean by that? It's not the people with the habits. It's people who claim no religious affiliation of any kind. Um, and yet, um, the eternal truths of our faith are still true. There is a source of all existence who is love itself, who has come among us. Um, who has broken down every barrier for us so that we can know the source of all existence. And yet, um, 
people keep drifting away. And it's not because it isn't true. It's not because, as, as unfortunately, is also becoming a popular thought that we're really just accidents. You know, we're really accidents of nature. Uh, the physical laws kind of got spun around a few times and we ended up being here and there's really nothing to it and there is no first cause at all. To me, my humble opinion, that's dumb as a post. That's like saying, it's like standing in a skyscraper, you know, at the top floor of a high-rise skyscraper and saying, I see no evidence for architects. <laughs> I don't believe it. Portrait in the hall. Great grandma sits in teenage glory, elegant gown, buttoned up to her almost smile. An amazing accident. The oils and colors. Who would have imagined pain could happen just to fall? And give us all such beauty. And give us all such beauty. And give us all such beauty. Imagine our luck. things unseen, so gratefully combined, everything's alive, so the acorn climbs and digs and drinks and shapes the sunshine into the tallest oak tree, they give us all such beauty, they give us all such beauty, they give us all such beauty, imagine our life. Chaos, imagine things were great. Imagine space was empty, no light to show the way. But you wonder why the universe instead is filled with beauty. The portrait in the hall, great grandma sits in teenage glory. Accident of oils and colors. Who would have imagined it could happen just to fall? Give us all such beauty, give us all such beauty, give us all such beauty. Imagine our luck, give us all such beauty, give us all such beauty, give us all such beauty. Thank you. I couldn't help taking the opportunity to show off some of my family, you know. I feel very lucky. And I want to thank, especially uh, on that song, I have a good friend from high school. His name is Russ Wheelock. We actually went back to middle school. We started learning guitar together, you know, in middle school. And he lives in Asheville now, and, and I asked him if he would play lead guitar on that one, and he did, so I'm, I'm grateful to Russ. We have uh, some challenges in getting this message, this eternal message, uh, for which people were willing to die throughout history to this generation. Things have changed so much. Um, this slide here is a picture of the whole universe as it is pictured in the Bible. That's the whole universe, not just the planet Earth. Um, you have the dome above the Earth, and God above the dome, and the stars hung on the dome, and the great deep, the mysterious part underneath that nobody understands. And, um, and, in the, and this is not because people you know, in ancient times were not smart. They were incredibly smart, but their powers of observation 
were not like ours. And so this is how they believed the entire universe was. And so all of our language about faith, all of the things that we are so comfortable with, because we grew up with them, um, come from this very pre-scientific era. And so we talk about lords and kings and the image that we have of God in terms of the way we talk about God is very small. It all fits in this kind of snow globe the size of North America. And I want you to just do a little exercise with me. Um, I want you to imagine you're out, not in, at least where we are in Florida, there's too many trees. So maybe picture Wyoming. Have you ever been to Wyoming? Anybody? Let's picture some place where it's just completely wide open and, and it's away from the city and it's night and you can see the um, cloud of stars that is the Milky Way and the stars filling the entire sky. And then I want you to take your finger, your index finger and your thumb and make the smallest little gap you can make between your index finger and your thumb and hold it out at arm's length. And I want you to imagine the little piece of the sky you could see through there. Everybody with me? This is what that would look like if you could use the James Webb Space Telescope. And those are galaxies. So if, if you could imagine um, the whole sky filled with galaxies, this is the universe we live in. It's just incredible. And so um, we have to admit something that is difficult. And that is when we ask ourselves, how do we know what we know about our faith? I can tell you how I know what I know. Um, I had people in my life who loved me so much that they wanted to pass on to me these eternal truths that we're talking about. Um, and then I had a pastor and several pastors in my life who were very committed to me. And eventually I had the blessing of going to seminary. But when, it, when I think about that universe that we just looked at um, and how vast it is, um, I realize that when it comes to all there is to know about God, I know nothing. Nothing at all. Because God is so vast and so mysterious and so wonderful, we just can't even fit it in our little human brains. So um, as we go out to share our faith, I think we have to begin with humility. Um, Lutherans, at least in my experience, we haven't been all that good at that, <laughs> you know, because we have it right, you know. I mean, <laughs> and, um, and as I began thinking about uh, that little piece of the universe and how little I know about God, I realized uh, humility has to be the first step. We know nothing, nothing at all. All we flash is in the pan of eternity. Can we find a kind trace of humility? We've been told ours is the only truth. Those who cared wanted our souls to be well. Since we believed it from the days of our youth, do we condemn those who don't see it to hell? Claiming love gave us that story to tell. Nothing at all. All we flash is in the pan of eternity. Can't we find a kind trace of humility? 
considering all that is contained in one tear why would the light point us to anger and fear the very song that causes all things to be draws us to love not to demand what we think we see not to require that all must be just like you and me Nothing at all. All we flash is in the pan of eternity. How do we see the whole rest of humanity? Stop and wonder. Stop it all. Divide or fight or kill over opinions. In the end, we're just defending our enemies. Stop and wonder. Stop it all. From just one mile into space, no one will see your face. We know nothing. Nothing at all. All we flash is in the pan of eternity. Can't we find a kind trace of humility? I'm surprised you applauded for that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, if you ever wonder where that idea came from, look at the end of the book of Job, uh, when God shows up, and God says to Job, where were you when I formed the foundations of the world? You don't know anything. So, um, one of the things that I've been struggling with, too, and I'm just going to be really laying it out there for you, so if there's stuff in here that makes you uncomfortable, stuff that you disagree with, you know, you all know you can do that with me. Um, but the, uh, one of the things that I struggle with is that Paul, when he was using, uh, and the Old Testament prophets, too, when they were trying to explain what God has done for us, um, they were doing so with the legal system inside that dome, um, with the um, patriarchy and the kings inside that dome, uh, with the law as people would have understood it, and the different gods that they saw and the way things worked, they were trying to explain what God did in a way that made sense to their people. And, um, and some of it doesn't make sense, I don't think, in our day. Um, those models and metaphors, and that's the best we can do when we're talking about God. Because God is so far beyond our comprehension, so far beyond um, what it is for us. Um, we have to use models, we have to use metaphors, we have to use illustrations. Um, and my idea of that, um, explaining that has changed a great deal, and this next song kind of talks about that. What kind of parent sets the bar so high The children all must fail Having planned torments and punishments for failing What sort of father feels so distant His family lives as if alone What sort of mother keeps her loved ones from prevailing if that is love, if 
that is love what is caring what is cruelty what is kindness if that is love if that is love what hope has anyone who's born into this world who designed eternal justice so that everyone's accused one mistake is all it takes for condemnation and who demanded the grim redemption that to cleanse the human race pure innocence was murdered in humiliation if that is love if that is love where is patience what's abuse and where is gentleness if that is love if that is love what hope has any soul who's born into this world but if instead the love the word was born to lead us into light to be the way the truth the life real love revealing always grace for the broken guilty always mercy for the lost even in anger leading everyone to healing if that is love if that is love then i believe that there is hope even for the hopeless if that is love if that is love Maybe that's why we can see love in this world If that is love If that is love Then it's the one thing that can save this desperate planet If that is love since God is love Then I believe that we can be love in this world Then I believe that we can be love in this world Thank you. Pastor Jeremy really didn't know I was going to be sharing all this stuff, so <laughs> theological issues, you can bring them to me. You don't have to bug in with it, but um, there's uh, not only the challenge we have of translating the eternal truths of our faith uh, for the 21st century for people who have newly discovered they're living on the edge of this universe, but also uh, another challenge that, that I ran into, and some of you know this, um, is sometimes life is just difficult and you don't have it in you to do it. Um, some of you know that uh, in January of 2020 um, I ended up in the hospital, uh, did, had no idea how I got there and, and before that I was this uh, completely optimistic, upbeat, energetic, positive, do anything, do everything kind of guy and um, and after that, for the first time in my life, um, I started having anxiety attacks. Uh, my neurologist said I'd had a vascular event in my brain that had changed things. 
and I started having problems with depression, and I never had any of this before. I'd read about it in books, and I'd pat people on the shoulder and say, gosh, that's really a bummer, but I had no idea uh, until it happened to me um, that, that it's real. And especially after the pandemic, um, I ran into so many people who aren't even ready to think about sharing their faith. They're just thinking about whether they can get out of bed, thinking about whether um, they can make it out the door, let alone to church. And, um, and one of the things that people who struggle deal with is the question of where is God in all of this? And, um, and the next song that I want to do is, is uh, kind of like a prayer what the Holy Spirit kind of shared with me as I was going and continue. I hate to say it, but I can till, continue to struggle with this. Um, and, and Lori will tell you, it's so random. I have no idea when it's going to hit me. And I have no idea why, but sometimes it does. And, um, and this song is about my kind of conversation with God about this. Like rain on the rock of Gibraltar, your love washes over me. Gently, completely, soaking the surface, urging me into the sea. I show the world grows thinner and thinner each breath a moment by moment calm when the pain could be so deep unceasing it's safer to feel nothing at all On the rock of Gibraltar, your love washes over me, gently, completely soaking the surface, urging I believe in the end it will change me Every grain of hardness Dislodged by the waters above But sometimes it feels so hopeless Life unchanging I could teach the way out While my heart doesn't know how to love Like rain on the rock of Gibraltar, your love washes over me, gently, completely soaking the surface, urging me into the sea. of my heart I'm protecting the hardness the shape I want others to see oh Christ dissolve this self to which I'm clinging wash me into your life let me rest in who I'm meant to be like rain on the 
the rock of Gibraltar Your love washes over me Gently, completely Soaking the surface Urging me to the sea Thank you. Some of you know that I've used the uh, illustration of the two by four along the side of the head from the Holy Spirit. Um, I started writing this next song. Oh, did you see that? No, you can't see that. Sorry, I couldn't skip this. Never mind, Siri, go to bed. That's so weird. That's, that's the... Uh, that's the danger of using a computer for this stuff. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm asking for people for a real band for the next time I do this. So, um, so uh, the biggest challenge, I think, you know, I've talked about a couple of challenges to sharing our faith in this 21st century that, and living our faith in this 21st century. Uh, but this next song, I thought I would write about those people you know, the challenge that those people have. And as I was writing it, it's like the Holy Spirit two by four said, this is about you. Oh, no, it's, oh, oh gosh. Yeah. So it's kind of a tongue-in-cheek kind of fun song, but, um, but if you see yourself in it, uh, just beware of the two by four. Okay, because it's, yeah. Anyway, I think this is the biggest challenge, literally the biggest challenge, we face um, in the church in terms of living and sharing our faith. Uh, and if the Holy Spirit is saying this to you, like the Holy Spirit said it to me, so be it. You're the star of your existence. I wanted to get the microphone and walk around. You know. If only your family could see it's true. Other people, well, <laughs> they're co-stars. But baby, why can't they see it's all you? You're the star of every scene you're in. Oh, I can see it in your eyes. What you choose to do and say Man, it's no surprise Why should you be bothered With where your trash goes Or give a care About who makes your clothes As long as life is good for you and getting better, anything goes. It's all about you. Am I right? Because you're the star, you're the point, you're the reason. Others should orbit you like a moon. Maybe they wouldn't be so annoying if they could only see they're just not like you. Let's face it, you're the star of all existence. Why give a damn about who comes after you? Live in comfort till the end That's your goal, my friend And when 
all is said and done I wonder who'll notice when you're gone Cause when you're cold and in the grave All that's left is the love you gave Sad but true Thank you. It was fun until it wasn't, you know, that song. It's like, mm, ouch. Um, as has been mentioned a number of times, I, I have visited a lot of churches. Um, and, and one was extremely helpful to me as a visitor, sadly. <laughs> Only one. And, um, and I think it has a lot to do with that last song, that, that idea. You know, we like church to be the way we want it to be. And, and we kind of want people to like what we like. And so when we invite people in, we want them to uh, do what we do and like what we do. And, and it's really um, more about us. And so this next song um, was kind of based on my experiences of visiting and I tried to picture what it would be like if I was an unchurched person, a non-church person. And, I, um, and I, excited, I decided to accept an invitation and come to church one Sunday. I'm like the stranger invited to this party. The only one someone doesn't know. Though some may risk a smile Most awkwardly pretend that they don't see me Those around me seem to know what's going on here They know just what to sing and what to say But me, I'm sitting, standing, sitting, standing Feeling like I've lost my way and I'm wondering what am I doing here I was invited but it's painfully clear I'm not sure who this is for But I can see it wasn't meant for me So many words I don't understand and those I do paint me rejected and sad I was curious, afraid, but now I wish I hadn't stayed What am I doing here? My friend said it's a friendly group of people Now I'm sure he sees that differently than me sign says all are welcome it seems strange when nothing else here welcomes me and though the preacher speaks as if the words are sacred some are listening some are sleeping some just stay but this lesson's not for strangers not for wanderers or those who just don't care Ask myself, what am I doing here? I was invited, but it's painfully clear. I'm not sure who this is for, but I can see it wasn't meant for me. So many words I don't know. Those I do paint me rejected and sad I was lonely and afraid But now I wish I hadn't stayed What am I doing here? i 
this party The only one someone doesn't know Though some may risk a smile Most awkwardly pretend that they don't see me Thank you. Been a heavy section of this, uh, and I want to move into something a little more hopeful because I, as Lori was working with me on some of this stuff, she said, "Man, you sound kind of anti-church. <laughs> what is that all about?" And and it's exactly the opposite, frankly. Um, I know, you know, because I've been involved in the church since I was born. Um, I'm thankful to my parents for that. I know that this eternal truth we have to share is so vitally important and that the local church is, uh, I believe that the incarnation now happens through us. So this is so important. We, we are now the body of Christ in the world. Um, and, uh, and so I'm very pro-church. And I'm not saying uh, for a minute that we have to stop doing what we're doing. You know, I love all kinds of worship that we do. I love the traditional worship. I love the contemporary worship. And, and I don't think we need to change all of that. But I do think that um, we need to recognize that that's not what it's really all about. That's supposed to be like the fueling station. I want you to imagine everybody uh, pulling into your charging station or your gas station and just uh, hanging out. And then you go home. And that's all you do is you charge up and go home. And, you know, you, we, we are fueling ourselves uh, to be the body of Christ, to get this eternal gospel to these people uh, we know and who we don't know who are living without the knowledge that they are loved, that they are precious in God's sight, that God's own self came for them. Um, so we need to think, what else? What's next? Coming here is important. Um, reminding ourselves in worship of whose we are, who God is, and who we are uh, is so important. Strengthening, encouraging, being fed. I hear so many people saying, that's why I come to church, to be fed. Um, I can give you personal testimony what, to what happens when you are fed and then you don't do anything. My guitar sits a lot farther out than it used to <laughs> because of that very phenomena. Um, so uh, that's something we really need to more than ponder. We need to plan. How do we get this gospel out? How do we transform what has been a church that's uh, the star to a church that's the light out for the people out there? And this next song that I want to do uh, just shares that hope that, that we have to look forward to. And I have to tell you something weird about this song. This is a total aside. After all this uh, serious stuff I'm laying on you, this is something funny. Uh, as I've been practicing this program at home, this song, and Lori will vouch for me on this, this song and this song only, our dog Buddy insists on singing along with me. <laughs> I have no idea why. And every time I tried mixing up the order, I tried everything, and, um, and every time he's usually sleeping, you know, nearby, and I get to this song and he looks up and he's like, and he just wails away. He's a terrible singer. <laughs> but anyway, um, most of you in this room have lost a lot of people in your lives. And, um, and this uh, song is just pointing to the hope that we have to share. Someday our hearts will not be aching One day empty 
empty places will fill A time comes when we won't hurt each other We won't carry the guilt of our will On a day when all tears will be joy-filled When all loved ones and enemies stand Face to face, hand in hand, all forgiven Where the presence of God lights the land Oh, I want to be where the presence of God where the presence of God lights the land. Holy Spirit, we pray, shape our hearts for the day. When the presence of God lights the land, we'll see every face we have longed for. Each face we have feared full of love Christ the Lamb who will know as our shepherd Every pain, every doubt will remove And the earth will be groaning no longer As the Spirit of God guides each hand. Christ will lead us restored with creation. Where the presence of God lights the land. Oh, I want to be where the presence of God, where the presence of God lights the land. Holy Spirit, we pray, hold our hearts for the day when the presence of God lights the land. Oh, I want to be where the presence of God, where the presence of God lights the land. Holy Spirit, we pray, Take our hearts for the day When the presence of God lights the land This is who you are. You are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And, uh, and I can't tell you how wonderful it is to be a part of this body of Christ. And it gives me hope for the world to think of what God is going to do through us as we open up uh, to being a people of faith on the edge of a vast universe. And as we begin to take these eternal truths God has trusted to us and spoken so clearly, you know, through the centuries in our scriptures and learned to speak them clearly to the people of this generation and the future. I want to close with the song that I did at the very beginning uh, because it's a worship song and you might, uh, after having heard it once, be able to sing along. I don't know if you can, but I, I just want to wrap up with worship because we kind of began with worship. We gather, we sing, we listen in awe We remember the light we've seen Your presence surrounds us The fulfillment of promise What was, what is, what will be Our eyes are open, our minds are unclean we are lifted above the smog. We 
returning to love that was there all along. We're reminded as we sing the song. You are love, you are light, the first cause of all things, the most wonderful mystery. You are life for all life, you are joy for all time, you're the reason we're meant to be. For all eternity overwhelms and distracts help us live help us love help us be alive with your presence a light in the darkness your love for the world to see you are love you are light the first cause of all things the most wonderful mystery you are life for all life, you are joy for all time, you're the reason we're meant to be, for all eternity. You are love, you are life, the first cause of all things, the most wonderful mystery. You are life for our life, you are joy for all time. You're the reason we're meant to be for all eternity. Thank you. Thank you all for coming this evening. Um, I happen to know that my wife has baked, in fact, our house has smelled amazing <laughs> this week, because my wife has baked some amazing homemade cookies and we've got coffee. And uh, because this is a guinea pig sort of thing, you all are the first time I've ever done this. I would love to just, if you want to hang around and have cookies and coffee and chat and, and give me feedback, I would very much appreciate that. So. So thank you all for being here. And I don't know, do we have somebody in that back booth? Are you there? Oh, yes. Good. Thank you. Would you mind turning on the lights, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good. Yes. Thanks again for being here. Every moment for your 
your glory, God most holy. 